If you have hiatal hernia syndrome, you may have been told you have a shortened esophagus. And we're gonna go into how that can happen, things you can do about it. There are some times that you can't do anything about it, but I like to focus on things we can change to our benefit. So uh, one of the reasons you can get a shortened esophagus is that you've had chronic acid reflux for a very long period of time that has created inflammation, redness, because of course acid is not supposed to bathe the esophageal tissues and due to that you get scarring or called fibrosis. And if you have a scar anywhere, you'll know that that tissue is not elastic anymore. It's, it's pretty constrained and it tends to tighten. So that's a reason you can get a shortened esophagus from very, very chronic acid reflux, which is of course why uh, if you have symptoms of acid reflux, we want to jump on this as soon as possible, get to the root cause and have you not have that problem. But the thing that you can do something about, in addition to getting to the root cause of the acid reflux, is to look at your vagus nerve. And uh, it can affect esophageal shortening in a few different ways. So the vagus nerve is your longest cranial nerve. It comes from the Latin wandering because it goes to a lot of different places in your body. It leaves uh, your brain, it comes down the front of your neck, uh, which is significant. I'll tell you why in just a few moments. But it goes into the chest, the heart, the um, esophagus, the stomach, the entire abdomen, and the abdominal organs. Uh, it also innervates uh, your diaphragm. So it, it has to do with really all the major organs involved in hiatal hernia syndrome. And that's why it's very critical that you have good, what's called vagal tone. You want the vagus to, to be happy. Now, when vagal tone is not what it should be, uh, the vagus nerve affects normally, when it's functioning normally, what's called peristalsis, which is just that wave-like motion that you have in your esophagus. You also have it in your intestines. It's what moves food and liquid down and through the intestines. We're just focusing on the esophagus right now. So that, that motion, that wave-like motion that brings food when you're swallowing down into your stomach is controlled a lot by the vagus nerve. Uh, also, the vagus nerve uh, has to do with, it maintains the tone of what's called the lower esophageal sphincter. So your esophagus has two valves or sphincters where um, they open when they sense food or liquid coming and then they close afterward to prevent things from going in the wrong direction. Now, your esophagus connects your mouth all the way down to your stomach. Your stomach is residing below your diaphragm. This is the left side of my body, so I'm going to put my fist here. So there's your stomach below the diaphragm. Now the esophagus passes through that diaphragm and that lower esophageal sphincter is, is below the diaphragm and then that allows food and, and drink to come through as well. Closes afterwards, again trying to prevent that reflux or that wrong direction of any food or liquid and or stomach acid, of course. And the vagus nerve, your vagus nerve controls the tone of that sphincter as well and it controls the nerve going to your diaphragm. So it's all about the vagus nerve uh, when we're talking about acid reflux, uh, chronic reflux, irritation to the esophagus, and hiatal hernia. Uh, the other thing is that you have what's called longitudinal muscles also controlled by your vagus, and, and these in your esophagus uh, help swallowing as well. So you have the peristaltic motion, the wave-like motion, and then you have this, these longitudinal muscles along the um, periphery that they contract and they help with swallowing to, to bring things down into your esophagus. Now, as they contract, even if you just look at the length of my hand, it's, it's shortening, right, as I contract it. Uh, but that, that is a temporary measure, right? Those longitudinal muscles, they contract, they're moving things downward, uh, but that's just temporary while you're in the action of swallowing. But again, with poor vagal tone, those can, can stay too contracted 
and, and that gets compromised and of course your esophagus shortens. Now, how is a shortened esophagus influencing a hiatal hernia? Because as I just explained, that esophagus goes all the way through, down the, through the diaphragm and opening in your diaphragm, down into your stomach, right? The, the esophagus connects to the stomach. So if everything shortens, now your stomach is getting pulled up and uh, the sphincter can't work to keep things closed. The stomach's pushing up uh, potentially now above the diaphragm. So it's compromising all the measures that uh, mother nature put in place to keep things moving in the right direction and staying there. So the point I'm trying to get across is it's very important that you have proper vagal tone. Otherwise, uh, all these movements are compromised and you can get a, a shortened esophagus, not a structurally shortened esophagus, like I was mentioning earlier due to scar tissue, but a functionally shortened esophagus simply due to poor vagal tone. So that's, that's a nervous system aspect, right? So the vagus is a, uh, is a nerve. And so uh, it, this can be altered by improving vagal tone. And that's what I wanted to focus on. So uh, the vagus is not considered a primary cause of hiatal hernia, but it is considered uh, an ancillary or secondary cause based on lack of proper tone lack of proper function. Uh, it also affects how your stomach emptying. There's so many things that the vagus nerve affects, but I specifically wanted to talk about the esophagus because very often patients are told, oh, it appears you have a shortened esophagus. So is it due to scar tissue we can do nothing about, or is it due to vagal tone that we can influence? So let's focus on what we can influence. So as far as assisting vagal tone. There are some very easy things you can do. And I was thinking a lot of them can be done in the shower. <laughs> um, you can do what's called a box breathing, which they call it that because there's four sides to, to a box. And you, you inhale through the nose for about a count of four. And then you hold your breath for a count of four, however long you can. And then you blow out for that same count and then you keep the breath out to build the bottom, the, for, the fourth side of the box. And you do that for two to three minutes doing this box breathing. It's very relaxing. It moves you more into a, a parasympathetic nervous system profile, which is where the vagus nerve is most influential. It's very relaxing. Um, you don't have to do it in the shower. Well, you, you'll see where I was where I was thinking about shower in just a moment, because a lot of people like to sing in the shower or hum in the shower. And so uh, the next thing that's, that's easy to do for the vagus nerve is to hum and sing and gargle. So you can gargle in the shower as well. Um, and then cold exposure. So at the end of your shower, you can, you can do a, a cold uh, exposure in the shower. Even just doing your face or hands cold exposure is, is very uh, effective for the vagus nerve. So if you don't have to put your whole body through that. If you don't want to, you can just get your face nice and cold and your hands nice and cold. And uh, doing that in the shower is pretty easy. So a lot of, a lot of these can be shower activities. Uh, laughter is another uh, beneficial activity. Another one is massage. Moderate intensity ex exercise, not in super intense. So if you have a vagus problem, uh, extensive, intense exercise is uh, not beneficial. So more moderate intensity is, is better. And then also something called eye gazing. So I'm looking straight here at the camera, but I'm just going to shift my eyes to the right. And you would do that for 30 to 60 seconds. And you move your eyes just as far as you comfortably can. Then after the 30 to 60 seconds, you don't move your head, just your eyes. And then after the 30 to 60 seconds, now I'm going to look to the left and, and that's eye gazing. And you can do that uh, several times. That also helps stimulate the vagus nerve. So these are easy things to do, no cost. Do them at home other than the exercise. You want to get out and about for that. And then lastly, one of the uh, structural influences on the vagus nerve because it leaves your brain and comes down the front of your neck is if you are somebody, let me go sideways. 
if you've got that forward translation of your neck um, versus your, your head, if you look at you from the side normally in your natural position, your head should be over your spine. It shouldn't be leading the way. Um, it, it's hard on a lot of different nerves and muscles, but it very particularly bothers the vagus nerve. So uh, chin tucks, where you do this exercise, tucking your chin, um, making sure that your computer monitor is such that you have a little bit of neck extension. That means looking up versus, of course, you know, people on their phone all day long looking down. It's terrible for the neck and posture and, and as I said, for a lot of things, but focusing on vagus nerve, that will aggravate it as well. So you want that, that straight posture, your head above your shoulders, and that's easier said than done, I know, because some people have a lot of weak muscles. So that's where we get into chiropractic, physical therapy, um, a clinician who will help you strengthen these muscles as, as needed and maybe um, take uh, irritation off certain nerves if that's required. But you knowing your body and knowing the symptoms that you have, if you also have, have that neck issue, definitely something to try to make an effort to, to correct okay, and be mindful of. So uh, I hope that was helpful. I think too often um, patients are, are told, I hear this a lot from new patients and, and those of you who watch these videos that, oh, I have a shortened esophagus and, and that's why I have my head all hernia, so I'm just stuck. And not necessarily, you know, there's a lot that can be done to uh, increase the vagal tone and, and have all of these muscles working appropriately so things are not overly spasmed and maybe pulling up due to vagus nerve irritation rather than sim simply a structurally shortened esophagus due to scar tissue or perhaps even being born with it, but there's obviously nothing you can do about that. But for vagal nerve tone, and not only are you improving all the digestive aspects of what we just talked about, but there's mood and better sleep and, and the vagus nerve affects so many different things. So definitely worth your while to put some emphasis on your vagus nerve. There's also a vagus nerve stimulator we use here at the office and tell patients about. It's called True Vega, T-R-U-V-A-G-A. -A. Uh, I'm not, uh, my, I have, it's not my company. I don't have anything to do with it, but uh, it, it, it's something you put uh, either side of your neck and it, it feels like a little TENS unit, like you, it's not painful at all. It's like a little tickle that you feel. And I use it every day, as does my husband, morning and night. It's just, a, it's a two minutes thing, so it doesn't take very long, but very effective. So these are the things, oh, we do have a discount code, so if anybody's interested, just remember, uh, you can do that. But see if that's appropriate for you. Otherwise, I just gave you a lot of good hints. I hope you found that valuable. And uh, if you do like the information that we share on this channel, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'm trying to increase our subscribers so that more people can get exposed to this information. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I answer pretty much every comment that I receive. So I love to hear from you and I really value that you're part of this channel and uh, let me know what you wanna hear about. Okay, we'll talk soon.